I've got a confession to make. My name's Paul, and I have a problem. I have a 2022 Tesla Model Y Performance, and I have 16 tires. So smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and hit the subscribe button to get notified when I upload new content. So let's go back to the beginning. It was November 2021, and I was driving to work on my 37-mile commute. All of a sudden, the check engine oil light of my car came on and said, check oil level immediately. I pulled over at a local service station, and lo and behold, I was down three and a half quarts. For those of you who don't have a gas car, being down even one quart can be detrimental to the engine. So I added three and a half quarts of oil to my car, and I took it to the dealer to find out what was going on. I bought this car about five years before with about 50,000 miles on it. And I should have known better, but I decided to purchase it on the internet sight unseen. Well, you and I both know now that cars that end up on the internet typically have some sort of underlying issues. This is one that the Lexus dealer took in off lease or on trade. And instead of fixing it up, and selling it as certified pre-owned, they took it to the auction and sold it to some third-party seller. Well, I got a lemon. This car, every time I took it in, every 5,000 miles, the service bill was anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 and sometimes $3,000. I couldn't get away. So as I was driving to the Lexus dealer to take my 2007 LS 460L in for service to find out why the low engine oil light was on, I was dreading it. The car had been serviced there for over 80,000 miles, and so I knew if there was an issue, they would, they would know what was going on. Lexus is known for incredible quality. My Lexus? Not so much. I took it to the service station, dropped it off, and went to work. I got a call about five hours later, and my work news went from bad to worse. It was going to be over $15,000 to repair my Lexus. The list was incredibly long. In short, the engine was shot, the heads were shot, and anything that could go wrong was wrong with my car. That's when I had a decision to make. Do I pour $15,000 into a car that's only worth ten, dollars or do I cut my losses and move on? At this time, it was the height of the pandemic, and all cars were in short supply. Tesla was even worse. I knew that I wanted an SUV to sit up higher, and I knew that I wanted an electric vehicle to help with my 86-mile commute back and forth. With my commute each day in my Lexus, I was paying over $17 in gasoline to drive to and from work, and so I knew that an EV would make economical sense. I was looking at the Teslas, and I knew that I wanted the Model Y because of the space and because of the performance. I wanted a long range. However, at that time, it was almost a year and a half before I could take delivery of a Tesla Model Y long range. At that time, though, if you upgraded to the Tesla performance for about $8,000 more, you could take delivery in as little as two to three months. So that's what I decided to do. I ordered a Tesla Model Y Performance. When I placed my order for the 2022 Tesla Model Y Performance, it was the dead of winter. And the Tesla Model Y Performance came with summer tires. I knew that summer tires and winter were a disastrous combination. So I looked around on the local forums and found a set of 19-inch Tesla Gemini wheels that had been taken off of a previous owner's car after about a thousand miles. I went and picked those up and still and waited to take delivery of my Tesla Model Y. So the Tesla waiting game began. My order date bounced up and down, back and forth. It went from two weeks to what felt like two years. In all, it took about 82 days to take delivery of my Tesla Model Y performance. And when I got to the service station, to pick up my Tesla, lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, they had 21-inch Uber turbines with Michelin all-season performance tires. Tesla had gone and changed what they had originally specced with the car. 
Well, the roads in Ohio are like the surface of the moon. I'm telling you, in the winter, they are absolutely horrible. And so I quickly came home, swapped out the 21-inch Uber turbines for the 19-inch Tesla Gemini wheels, and ro rode out the remainder of the winter. When summer rolled around, I swapped on the Michelin all-season performance tire, the Michelin all-season performance tires, and enjoyed the looks and the handling and the performance that the Michelin and the 21 Uber turbine. So this brings me to today. Eight months of ownership and over 20,000 miles, I have saved a ton on gasoline. And I absolutely love my 2022 Tesla Model Y performance. So while you save on gas, the tires, they wear out a lot more quickly. And let me tell you, Tesla tires are expensive. The extra load rating and the additional sound dampening foam inside the tires and just the fact that uh, you own a Tesla. So Tesla owners will tell you there's a Tesla tax. Anytime that you have a Tesla, add 20 to 30% to the same product or the same goods or the same service just because you have a Tesla. So two weeks ago, I found a local seller who had eight tires, four 21 inch Uber turbines, the Tesla tire pressure monitors, and it was a great price. It was just about a hundred bucks a tire to pick these up. And so I hopped in the car and quickly picked up the tires because I knew that I would be needing tires after I drive about 30,000 miles every year. And at about 100 bucks a tire, I couldn't pass it up. So my name's Paul, and I have a problem. I can't pass up a good deal. And this is how I ended up with 16 tires for one Tesla. So to get these tires off the garage floor and to keep the wife happy, I purchased a couple of wall mount tire racks, which I'm going to be installing to, keep, to get these tires off the ground and up into the air until I'm ready to unmount and remount those on the uh, Tesla. So overall, very excited. I uh, love the extra tires and the extra wheels. In case I accidentally curb one of my meal wheels, I have four additional Uber turbines that I can swap on and quickly um, uh, keep my car looking fresh and new. So far with about 20,000 miles, I've managed to curb one wheel and it was the 19 inch wheels. For some reason, I wasn't paying attention and the curb on the side of the road jutted out and I was making a right-hand turn, and I didn't turn wide enough, and I just barely scraped the edge of the wheel. And so overall, with uh, 20,000 miles of wear and tear, bumps, and uh, potholes, the Tesla has fared great, and I've only managed to curb one wheel. So I purchased a set of wall mount tire and wheel racks, which I'm gonna be installing later this afternoon. I'll put a link in the description down below. <music> As you can see, we've made some good headway. We've got one of the two racks installed overhead. We have them installed in the single car garage where I keep the uh, Tesla. And I had to make sure that I had enough room between that and the overhang to make sure that the trunk lid or the hatch, whenever it came up, wouldn't contact that. So that was the biggest thing that we had to deal with. But overall, installation is very good. I got these off of Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description down below. And so you can take a look. They're from a company called Max Hall, but overall they're made very well. And you can either put them at 36, uh, I think 36 inches across or 48. This is 48 and that'll fit four sets or four tires of the performance wheels. And you still see, I've got just a little bit of room up there. So let's go take a look at the Max Hall, see what's inside the box. So here is uh, the kit. It comes with two cross beams, three of the extendable bars, set of instructions, and then a box of hardware, which includes lag bolts, uh, nuts and hardware, and washers. So overall, very easy to install. I'd say you can have them installed in about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how handy you are. 
A stud finder is a must, so that way you can locate where the studs are at to make sure that you've got uh, them installed correctly. But let's go ahead and get started and let's see what's going on. Well, we got the rack installed and I'll give you a closer look, but overall I'd say it took about 15, 20 minutes. So overall pretty easy to install. So let's go ahead and take a look. So you can see here, each side is held up with two lag bolts. The bars you can put at any, uh, any portion, any distance. And it's pretty strong. In fact, so much so my wife's gonna do a pull up on the bar. Go ahead there, Andrea. I don't know if I have it in me. <laughs> try. There you go. Thank you for your help, Andrea. You're welcome. All right. Now the really hard part is loading these bad boys up there. Ah, let's go. Well, I got the Tesla all tucked in. You can see what it looks like with the racks installed on either side. And let me show you actually how it turned out uh, because this is actually pretty cool because I can open the trunk without contacting So again, got room on both sides. No issues with clearance. But again, nice having the extra storage and nice getting at least two of the three sets off of the ground. But I'm curious, what's the best deal that you were unable to pass up? Let me know in the comments down below. Can't wait to hear about your experience with either your Tesla and the best deal that you couldn't pass up. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.